Hi, welcome back. I know it's been a while, but I've had some things I've been working on, mostly trying to get better lighting, and I was a little bit stagnated for ideas as to where to go with this video. Hopefully this new lighting's a good touch, a little more natural to color, doesn't wash my skin out as much, and doesn't make these colors look as off. I'm using more of a daylight balance natural color. So, what we're going to be covering in this video is primer. Generally, you prime in black for most models, of course. But there are times when you will need a gray because certain lighter colors are just going to adhere well to black or to wash them out so much that it won't even be funny. So, I'd heard about this online everywhere on the internet. People have been hyping it. Army Painter themselves hyped it. I figured I'd give it a shot. It's supposed to be an airbrush ready primer. Now, that's important because airbrush ready means that this should be relatively thin out of the bottle. This should be ready to go, pre-thinned, add a few drops into your airbrush, you're good. That's not necessarily what this is. I'll explain that in a moment though. One of the biggest things about this though is the fact that this is only $8.99. For a relatively good sized bottle, $8.99 is not a bad idea. Matter of fact, $8.99 is pretty cheap. Now, the issue with this, of course, is the fact that they explain this wrong also, but they also do one more thing, which is they treat this as it's like a traditional primer, like a Tamiya primer or a Mr. Cut or a Mr. Hobby primer. And yeah, in all honesty, it's not. It is the opposite. This is more like what you would buy for Say you're doing terrain with a certain type of material that you don't want the primer affecting, this is what you would use. Now, this is formulated for the War Paints Air Range, any color triads, or triadic harmonies for those of you that know that. Perfect base, midtone, highlight color. You don't do that with your primer. You do not use your primer as a highlight, midtone, and base, which you. Essentially, I know they're going for this whole color idea, but you would want a xenothal before you do that, because that would take out the guesswork. But, yeah, we're going to compare this to a product that's almost identical. Vallejo 74601 Gray Surface Primer Acrylic Polyurethane. This is important. This is a water-based acrylic. This is an acrylic polyurethane. One of these cleans out of your airbrush easier. I'm not going to say which one. One of these sticks better. I'm not going to say which one. And yeah, this one, of course, is $10 more. But it being $10 more means you get a 200 milliliter bottle. It's much bigger. You get a lot more primer. And you get better instructions. Now, obviously, I'll go to where there are actual instructions. Yeah, shake before you, supply in light coats from 20 centimeters. Ah, that could be fudged, give or take. Very resistant, suitable for plastics, brass, resins, etc. Blah, 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 blah. All the same general things about most primers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why can't you just use a rattle can? Why not just use a rattle can in this scenario? Well... There are times when you live in certain climates or certain regions when rattle can primers are not the easiest or smartest ideas to use. It has to be the right humidity, the right, pretty much everything for it to work the way it's intended to work. Now, these being water-based means they're airbrush friendly. If you're just starting off on the airbrush, I would say your best bet for a primer is going to be an airbrush primer, obviously. I mean, rattle can primers are pretty foolproof. They work well. They do as advertised on the can. But not everybody can use an airbrush primer. Not everybody really wants to use a rattle can primer. 
They stink. They're hard to use on certain surfaces. Certain minis, especially, don't apply to it. Some hard body models don't really take it too well. It all really depends on scenario. A good middle of the road, everything is going to work the way it's supposed to be is an airbrush primer. Of course, as a beginner, you need to learn how to use an airbrush. I'll explain that in a later video as well. But, yeah. Let's get over to the spray booth and we'll spray both of these on some pretty beat up minis that I use for testing primers and testing paints and contrast paints and all that with. And we'll see how they cover. We'll also see how they spray through an airbrush. All right, so here we are at the spray booth and I'm showing you exactly what's going to happen. This one's going to be sprayed with Vallejo Surface Primer and this one will be sprayed with Army Painters Primer. Now, both these minis are in pretty bad shape. This one is covered in various metallic pigment and things from where it's been sitting in the back corner of the spray booth right here, leading up to this video, basically. This one is one I keep by my desk that I use to test various paints on. Yeah, he's in pretty bad shape too, but Again, he's not something in my army. He's something that I have way too many models of. I have too many Reavers. Might as well, to my advantage, use one. So, first things first. We're going to thin these. Most of them come pre-thinned, obviously. They should. They're an airbrush primer. But what that means is this should be watery. It's not. We're going to just move these chaps back a little bit. We're going to get a couple little cups. We're going to thin this. One for each. Let me adjust the camera. I'll be right back. Now, when it comes to thinning your primers, it's really foolproof. You want to add two drops of thinner to every one drop of primer. I usually don't do that. I usually eyeball it, but... For the purposes of this video, we'll just go ahead and do it the way it's intended. Now, the Army Painter one, I will admit, I like this bottle. I like this tip quite a bit. Fits in the hand nice. Dispenses nice. So, we're just going to take a little bit. And we're just going to start dropping some in there. We're going to go two, three, four, five, six, seven... 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We'll go 19 drops. Now, so one thing I dislike is that this does bubble up a bit. Not the best idea in the world that it can really gum up the threads on this. So just wipe this down a little bit before you put the cap back on. Screw it down, make sure it's tight. We're going to put that aside and we're going to get airbrush thinner. We're going to do, let's see, we did 18, so we'll do 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now here's what you should be looking at something like this. I'm just going to take the old butt end of a brush. I'm just going to mix this up all nice and evenly. What you're looking for is the consistency of skim milk. This is pretty close to that, but you'll notice something. It's still not that great. Still pretty thick. This shouldn't be. An airbrush primer should be thin to start with. Now, we're going to set that aside. We're going to do the next one. We're going to use Vallejo. Vallejo's is pretty simple. Now, we're going to shake this off screen because it's a lot thinner much thinner. 
I will admit I don't care for these tips that much. I think they're relatively crappy tips, but they do work. So again, we'll do it the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You can be more precise with this since it does allow for that. And we're going to, again, do about 10 drops. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Don't worry about making a mess. You're gonna make a mess. It's gonna happen. It's inevitable. You're gonna make a mess. Get out another little stir stick here. And we're just gonna stir this up. And now you're gonna notice something after I get this stirred up. Viscosity. Completely different viscosities. This one is nice and thin. I can shake the cup. It goes where it needs to go. Shake the cup. It's a little thick. But we'll see how these lay on on the model. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's probably going to be a little hard to hear me since this booth is relatively loud. But this is what's about to happen. Starting with Army Painter, we are going to take our airbrush. Make sure the setting is right. It's at about 20 PSI right now, so I'd like to keep mine set out since it's what works the best for what I need, so I don't have to keep switching PSIs when I work with lacquers and acrylics. Put on some gloves, keep your hands protected. It is water based, it's not really going to hurt you any, but. Yeah, you just want to be safe. I'm going to pour it into the cup, and as you can see, it's pretty thick. All right, and we're going to just show the example of exactly what I'm talking about. As you can see, while it does cover pretty okay, it's doing a weird, almost spider webbing effect. It's taking more primer than it should such a small area, leaving a bit of a texture behind too. Really it shouldn't do this. Doing it the way it should be done, short quick bursts, just like you would with a rattle can. But I'm just trying to get rid of all the paint in the cup. Yeah. Not that great. It's spotty. It leaves kind of a sandy texture. I don't know if you can see that in the light there, but it leaves a bit of a sandy texture behind. Doesn't cover the best. Doesn't really do any real bonding necessarily. Kind of gums things up a little bit too. As you can see there, likes to spider web a lot. Now, I'm going to go clean this and I'll explain again just how much of a pain this can be. So, Army Painter's primer being water-based means it should be able to be cleaned out with water. Obviously it's not going to be able to. We're going to definitely have to use an airbrush cleaner. So, I'm going to just get a little bit of a homemade airbrush cleaner. Spray a little bit into the cup here. I would normally have a, something to dump this out into, like a little pot or something. But I'm going to keep that above me. I'm sure you guys don't want to see that gross cup filled full of rubbing alcohol and pain. Now, the last time I attempted to do this, yeah, it wasn't exactly the easiest didn't want to clean out. Okay. Again, making sure that we're doing what we can. What I'm doing here is I'm really trying to clean it out around the needle. This specific model of airbrush 
doesn't really like to, you know, inherently have stuff clean out of the needle well. I take a Q-tip, get some of the loose primer. I would do the same method with any airbrush I'm cleaning out, but especially this one. You see, as the color of the liquid is going back to kind of a standard green. Yeah, you're gonna have to excuse the airbrush compressor. One of those fancy ones that about every few seconds likes to circulate the air. Now, again, I keep doing it this way. So just one way to do it. Now, I'm gonna block the front end of this. I'm gonna blow back. I'm going to dump it out off screen, obviously. And, yeah, it's relatively clean right now. But, it doesn't mean it's not going to not be clean. Once we spray it out. Now, here I'm just going to show you that with a little bit of my standard cleaning solution, it's a clear green color. Normally, with most primers, you would just do this. You'll be fine. Not with this. This likes to sit in all the nooks and crannies of your airbrush. Now, we're going to do it one more time. This time, try another little blowback way of cleaning. Try to get some of those bubbles to pop a little bit. And same way. Gonna let some of these bubbles settle a bit so we can see. Should be any second now. Yeah, that's, that's good enough I can see. As you can see, it's not milky as it was but it's not clear enough we want this to be clear so what we're gonna want to do is just keep doing it until it turns clear finally starting to turn clear so now that it's turned clear we'll just stick it in our airbrush pot spray out I would recommend you either open a window for this or leave your booth on. I don't have my booth on just because, well, in all honesty, it's a little noisy. You wouldn't be able to hear me. But for most safety reasons, you would, yeah, definitely want to do that. Now, I like to take just a little tiny amount of alcohol, just a minute amount. I mean, barely enough to even halfway fill the cup. This is not a very big cup either. So that's saying something. And put a little bit in your cup, just enough to do everything. Make sure your gaskets are able to handle solvents. Let's just spray this in there as well. Letting it atomize properly. See how much of a pain that was compared to the next primer we're going to test, which is a lot easier. All right, and the next one we're going to test is Vallejo. Sorry about that, I had forgotten to switch the camera a little bit. But the next one we're going to test is Vallejo. The reason why is because generally Vallejo has better coverage, but also Vallejo being a lighter color you would think it wouldn't be able to go over these very vivid colors as much. What this is is Cassandora Yellow Wash and Croxagore Scale 
contrast paint, or grunt of fur, and I believe snake bite leather. And we're going to just test, make sure it's thinned right, it is. We're going to start going in the same way we originally did on the other model. Now it's not going to probably cover these colors in one coat, obviously, of course not. did a pretty good job. We're not trying to be perfect, obviously. We're not trying to get every nook and cranny. We are trying to get at least a consistent tone. Okay. And already you can tell, League's better. Already, as you can tell, League's and Bound's better than what Army Painter has to offer. Of course, the real determination is when they're dry. Of course, with this, with it's going over such vivid colors, you still have some blue peeking through, you got some yellow peeking through, you got a, quite a bit of brown still peeking through, but that's because we did a relatively thin coat of a very thin product. We could do a second coat, but for consistency's sake, we're not going to do that. Because while they're two different products, they both cover differently, they're both advertised to work differently. Now, this honestly will probably be enough. Vallejo Primer I've usually had good luck with. This should be plenty to work with. I'm going to let both these dry and then we'll go back to the bench. I'm going to clean this out and then we'll talk about it. We'll show sturdiness and we'll show why a good primer is important. All right, everything's dry, everything's cleaned out, and now everything is back where it needs to be. Let me get a little closer for you guys. So, well, it may not look like it in this lighting, but the Army Painter is a little bit darker, meaning it's going to simulate that it covers better. But the difference, of course, being in actual durability. The Army Painter primer is very weird in its consistency. It's very almost like it's a surfacer more than it is a primer. Why I say this, a surfacer is different from a primer because a surfacer contains almost a, bo a body primer or a body filler like a Bondo almost that fills in cracks and imperfections in a model like with 3D printing. You would do that with a filament printer to fill in cracks and imperfections on the print. But it's not advertised as a bonding primer because it isn't a bonding primer. It's just a very thick, very heavily pigmented water-based primer that's not crazy durable, but also feels more like a paint. One thing you can tell is when you touch it, it doesn't inherently feel like a primer. A primer is supposed to have a smooth, but slightly, mildly coarse appearance and feel. A good way to show this is I'm going to use something called a tape test. Last time I tried this, it failed pretty bad. But a tape test is when you take a piece of tape, put it onto the surface, where this would be, don't knock them off your spray stands either, and rip. You can see, not bad at first glance, but if I do this repetitively, you're going to start getting some of this peeking through, obviously. Now, with, I, with the Vallejo, let me do it on an area that I know is covered better. You have no fear of that. It's much more durable. It sticks better. It may not have covered as nicely, but that's because this is an actual primer. What this is doing is it's trying to put a very light color over very saturated, heavy colors. Generally, how you would do this if you planned on repainting this model, it's obvious. You would prime him black because black would cover all of this. You'd use this in your Zenithal highlighting for the face, tops of the buckles, everything facing this way. And the light casts a natural shadow. This I don't have to worry about touching. This is durable. It's not going anywhere. This, I'm concerned with touching. Because let me show you something. 
I don't have very sharp nails. I can barely put force behind it and I can chip off part of the primer. I shouldn't be able to do this. This is not that durable. A rattle can would outdo this 10 to 1. Let's try that on Vallejo. Same way. Nothing happened. There's just a tiny, itty bitty little dot where I was able to chip some primer off. This is not fully cured either, so that's saying something. I can show it better here on the back. Just, yeah, same amount of pressure being applied. Yeah, does nothing. That's a good thing. What that means is that this will be more durable. This will last better and paint's probably going to stick better to this than it's going to this. Matter of fact, I can prove this example. May as well do a quick coverage test since why not? These are testimonies anyway. I'm going to use a little bit of contrast paint, Black Templar. I'm going to just show what I'm talking about. You have a bit of a sandy texture. I don't know if you can see that well. That's not from the model. I cleaned this model up best I could before I attempted to. He had just a tiny bit of texture to him, but I sanded most of that down. We're going to see how this primer affects the contrast paint. And we're going to just liberally apply it, probably to just this leg, just to, just to see if that sandy texture does anything to the model. If it's any results like what I had last time, probably. As you can see, it's causing a cloudiness. This is completely dry, by the way. This is not a half-cured primer. This is a fully cured, dried primer coat. Yeah, it's adding a strange cloudiness in this region. What that means is it's either not formulated for this, or, this is the result I had last time too, it's made specifically for Army Painter products, which is kind of a shame. It's kind of a weird finish. Now we're going to try this over Vallejo and traditionally I wouldn't put black over white but I'm doing this to show an example that you can do the same thing over a far lighter primer. It's going to lay on lighter, it's going to look lighter, it's going to spray better because it's already a lot thinner. It'll be able to get in my opinion, nicer results going over a white primer, in this case an off-blue primer. I don't generally recommend using contrast paints unless you're a newcomer or unless you're just trying to get an army done on a weekend. So yeah, I'm just going to do this whole, this whole leg. Might as well. May as well do the whole leg while we're here. It's not like it's going to hurt anything. Now, here where it's beginning to dry, you can see it's bringing out a little bit of that blue here. But it's not cloudy like the last one. This one is still very much cloudy, which is strange. But, I'm sure I don't need to go any farther, but as you can see, Primer pays off. Vallejo's airbrush primer is a lot nicer. It's a lot smoother. It goes on a lot better. It covers a lot better. If you're doing something like you're trying to get a slight dark tinge to something by using Black Templar contrast paints, this is the way to go. This is definitely the way to go. If you're just trying to prime something very quickly, not worry about the final results, this is the way to go. Sadly, what this means though is that I can't really recommend the cheaper option. I would love to recommend you guys the cheap, affordable option, but I can't. This is just not that durable and it's not really user friendly. Having to guesstimate how much thinner to use, having to guesstimate 
the right amount of thinner pore ratio of primer is kind of a pain. On top of, I wouldn't use this with contrast paint or speed paints. I would use this with, if you're trying to get an army done and you don't want to pay a ton of money, and you're going to be using either army painters or rattle cans, I would, I would actually say you go their rattle cans more than this. Their colored rattle cans will help you get an army done quicker. Matter of fact, they'll do better than this and perform better than this in half the time and won't leave this weird, almost body putty, sandy texture. Not exactly what I'd recommend. All in all, I would say only give this a chance if you 100% Desperately need a primer and you only got like 10 bucks. This is a no-brainer. But I also would say shop around. Try to make a primer if you can't find one. But on the other hand, a can of Mr. Surfacer 1000 will only cost you about $10 and some change at a hobby shop. And Mr. Hot Surfacer 1000 is better than both of these combined. It has the body filling natures of this by nature, like it's supposed to. And the coverage and smoothness of this while covering in one coat. Obviously, you would go with Mr. Hobby's Mr. Surfacer, but that's my personal preference. And that can be a little pricey when you start buying the 30 milliliter cans that tend to then to sometimes get a little pricey for the amount of primer you're getting in a bottle. But yeah, this is 200 milliliters for $17. For $10, you can get a bottle that's only about that high. Same diameter, obviously, but it's also going to go farther. You just have to be more careful with Mr. Hobby since it being lacquer based, you have to clean your airbrush differently. You have to treat it differently, you have to treat your models differently. This, on the other hand, while it is cheaper, it is going to cover, but it's not going to be too crazy durable and it's not really going to perform as well as something like this or anywhere near as good as something like Mr. Hobby or even Tamiya Surfacer in a rattle can or even Army Painter's own rattle can colored primers. I can't recommend this safely. All in all, I would say skip the product unless you're 100% desperate and need a primer. That's the only time I would recommend this. Or you just need a very specific shade of gray. It's going to match a specific Citadel color, but still, even then, I wouldn't recommend this due to its sandy nature, weird spray application, spottiness, the cloudiness it causes to certain contrast paints, and, of course, the fact that for the price you pay, you can add a few dollars more, get a far better product. Or, you can just spend middle of the road and buy the superior product, which is Mr. Hobby. Hopefully this video was informative and taught you guys something about primers and something about shopping around and trying to get the best deal you can. Hopefully you like this lighting as well. I'm trying to do something a little more warm and natural. As for the absence, well, that was mostly from a stagnation on video ideas. I couldn't think of where to go with this. I had planned a tool video and that kind of went by the wayside since I didn't really know where to go with it. The next video, I promise, will be within a week. And it's going to be me reviewing a couple more products. It's going to be me reviewing safety products for the hobby and ease of application products. So things that are made to make shortcuts or make the hobby easier. I hope you guys come back for that one. The channel's not dead. It's just, now that I've gotten into the creative swing of things again... I'll be posting more regularly. Recommend this to your friends. Hopefully I was able to help somebody. And I hope I'll be able to do a airbrush video for you guys in the future. Thank you. 
please come back in the next video. Bye.